Other than an impressive fourth quarter in the Raptors opening night win against the Cleveland Cavaliers, it has been a very disappointing start to the season for OG and Anobi. So disappointing that some Raptors fans are already saying that the team should look to trade him. So in today's video, we're going to explore what the Raptors could actually get in a trade for the player and if based on this start, we should actually make a move and find somebody who better fits our starting five. Let's get into it. What's going on NBA and Raptors fans, it's Jacob here back with Amateur Sports for another Toronto Raptors YouTube video. On this channel, I bring you the greatest coverage and analysis on the latest Toronto Raptors news and videos and content just like this. So if you like what you see from today's video, then make sure you are subscribed to the channel. You can help us on our road to 13,000 subscribers and drop a like on the video if you find yourself enjoying along the way. Let's get to 200 likes today. And remember to check out the watch parties for all of the Raptors games right here on Amateur Sports. But our video today, we want to talk about about OG and Anobi, and I wasn't planning on talking about OG and Anobi in our video segment for today, but on the live stream yesterday, the watch party that we did in the Raptors, pretty bitter loss to the Miami Heat, where we fight back valiantly, but still end up falling as a result of a very poor second quarter. And in that live stream, obviously, OG and Anobi was not at his best yesterday for the Raptors, and a lot of the viewers were talking about how the Raptors should look to now move OG and Anobi in a trade and beyond just the live stream I've actually had replies on my Twitter of people maybe suggesting that the Raptors should look to trade OG and Anobi because he has such a high value he's not been playing well he doesn't fit our team and it's all these stories every single year about the Raptors they should trade somebody last season we were talking about well not me some people were talking about how the Raptors need to trade Pascal Siakam. He takes too many touches and we need to prioritize getting the ball to other players like Scotty Barnes well Pascal Siakam ended up on an all-NBA team, and nobody is talking about that now. And we're only three games into the season here, but still, is there validity to the statement that maybe the Raptors should move on from OG and Anobi because this is the best that he's ever going to get, and he has such a high trade value, as we saw in the offseason with so many teams eyeing a trade for our almost prized possession small forward at 25 years old. So in the video, I do want to cover what exactly the Raptors could get in return for the player and if a trade is something that they should actually look to make based on what we've seen so far from the players. So the reason, firstly, that we need to talk about why we're talking about OG and Anobi in trade rumors, OG has struggled this season, but why has he struggled? Well, OG had talked a lot about in the offseason, and there were a lot of reports that were suggesting he wasn't satisfied with his role in Toronto and wanted to take on more of the offensive load for this team. This is somebody who is an excellent three-point shooter, somebody who is very efficient from the field and, and is already one of the best on-ball defenders in the NBA, but he wanted to add in more to his offensive game in his mid-20s, about to ascend into his prime. Can he take that next step? We've been waiting for this next step as Raptors fans for years and years and years. It has just not been forthcoming, but part of the process of doing this is testing out new parts of his game. Now, a lot of what I said in the offseason about OG was that something that really does hinder the Raptors on offense is OG taking contested mid-range jumpers because it's an inefficient shot. He's not one of the better players in this team offensively that should be doing that consistently like players like Pascal Siakam. He should eliminate that from his game. Well, instead, he has added on more of those shots to his game, and they are still not falling, and they have been quite ugly, actually. Watching OG try to take on players in isolation in mid-range has been very ugly to see, and it's part of his struggles. Yesterday, OG shot 5 for 14 from the field. The game before that, he shot 3 for 9 from the field. It's just not been a very good look for OG in these back-to-back -back losses for the Toronto Raptors, and that is where these conversations are coming from. And in the offseason, we learned that there is a big market for OG and Anobi. A lot of teams were looking at him, I guess mainly the Portland Trailblazers leading into the 2022 NBA entry draft, and there are some pretty good returns that the Raptors could be getting for the player, and based on reports, there might have been some pretty good returns that the Raptors actually turned down because they hold OG and Anobi into to such a high regard and there's definitely a reason they hold him to such a high regard and there is a reason why so many teams are trying to trade for the player because this is like the exact sort of player a good team possibly a contender team needs on their team the two-way athletic player who is an excellent defender who can space the floor is an excellent catch and shoot three-point shooter OG has shot near 40 percent from three in the past in his career a great three-point shooter that you can rely on to hit those shots and 
with his size, speed, and athleticism, can get downhill, can get to the rim, can finish at the rim really well, but is still trying to add in another layer to his game with that mid-range shot. And only 25 years old, maybe that next developmental jump can be there. And maybe a lot of this this talk about OG getting to that next level were all the Kawhi Leonard comparisons that we've had in the past. And, you know, granted, I took advantage of these Kawhi Leonard comparisons before on my channel. I spoke about how OG can make that next leap. Now, I never said that he can get to a Kawhi Leonard sort of level. I didn't say that. But I did say this is somebody at 23 years old at the time with the capabilities of adding in that third level of scoring to his game to add in maybe 21 points per game at some point in his career. That seems something that was feasible, but with each passing year, it kind of seems like the ceiling for their player is just coming a little bit lower and lower. I'm not suggesting that this is the best OG Ananobi is ever going to be because I don't quite think it is, but I am suggesting that if it is the best he's ever going to be, well, you have a damn good 3 and D plus sort of player who can average 18, 19 points per game. And I say 3 and D plus because he's not just a 3 and D player. He does a little bit more offensively than just a 3 and D sort of guy, but primarily that's what his role should be for the Raptors. I said in the offseason that less is more for OG and Anobi in his development. Instead of focusing on so many different things and trying to improve them, what he should be specifically focused on is the things he already does well. So instead of being B, B plus in a variety of different categories offensively. He should be an A plus in at the rim finishing, hook shots, those sort of little finishes in the post and shooting the three ball. Maybe a little bit off the catch and shoot. Maybe you touch a little bit on off the dribble from three, but really focus in on those specific aspects of your game that make you great and that really help this team. But it looks like the Raptors are content with OG and an OB working through this development process, trying to add in the mid-range game. And OG really, really wants to work through this. And you can see he really wants to work with it because he's just taking such horrible and ridiculous shots in the field. But OG and an OB, as much as he hasn't been good in the last couple of games and even wasn't good in the first three quarters of the first game, where he shot under 40%, well under 40% a couple of games ago as well in the last two games. It's been pretty ugly watching his shooting performances. In those games, though, the last two, like yesterday against the Heat, he shot three for six from three. And in the Brooklyn Nets game, he shot two for four from three. Very small sample size, but that's 50% shooting from three. That's good. And in the first game, he shot two for five from three, which is also 40%, which is also good. So, that is something that has been working for him. He continues to be a very good three-point shooter, but what's tanking his field goal percentages, as I mentioned, is just the deep twos, the contested twos. These are the things that are hurting his game, and they're also consequentially hurting the Raptors game. So now fans are wondering if this is a player that we should actually look to explore trading, and any notion, any comment and he claimed that the Raptors are better off by trading OG and an OB are frankly quite laughable. I've laughed it off already, so I'll spare you any of those emotions today. But OG and an OB is a 25-year-old, and we're looking at the contracts around the NBA right now. OG and an OB signed on for four years, $72 million. At the time, that contract was a steal, and I said it would grow into be one of the best contracts in the NBA. And at where we are today... It is one of the best contracts in the NBA. You're seeing what Tyler Hero signed for with the Miami Heat. You're seeing what Jordan Poole signed for with the Golden State Warriors, $130 million plus. That's a lot of money. That's nearly double what OG and Anobi is making on his Raptors contract. OG is making $18 million a year. That contract as the cap increases is only going to look better and better. With this insane value that we have in the player, if we were to make a trade, it would be really difficult to get any sort of replicated value based on the contract matching that we would have to do. Now, we would be able to do it, but we would get a player who is making more money than OG and Anobi and probably doesn't fit the system that the Raptors want to employ with this team. Probably doesn't fit as well. People are saying that we need a big, and one of the worst takes I've ever heard occurred in the comments on my live stream where there was actually a suggestion this team would be better off trading OG and Anobi for Clint Capella. Clint Capella is a solid center, can get rebounds, but as far as what he can do offensively, he pales in comparison greatly to what OG and Anobi does offensively. So what needs to change for OG and Anobi? It's not the team. 
What needs to change is the decision making. It looks like the Raptors want him to work on developing this new aspect of his game. They want him to work on developing this mid-range game. So maybe, and in a good comment I had on, on Twitter today, maybe this is something that we're going to have to live with, the growing pains, the process of him adding in this new feature to his game. It's going to take some time to work on it, but it was a detriment slightly to this team last season analytically efficiency speaking it was a bad shot for the raptors it affected them offensively and it affects og and anobi's game so what needs to change is the shot iq yeah if you're wide open in mid-range or the shot clock is winding down that's a shot that you can take on but when you're earlier in the shot clock or you just take up a lot of time of the shot clock trying to dribble a guy isolate him in mid-range that's just not og and anobi's game and what can make him spectacular what can make him an elite player is just living with that role that you have as a 3 and D guy and becoming an elite player in that specific role. That's going to help OG and Anobi's career. I also think that's going to help his value because teams, like I said, need that on their team, want that on their team, and I've identified OG and Anobi as one of the best at doing that in the entire NBA. Really dial in that specific role. And I'll quote Bruce Lee again here. Bruce Lee said something along the lines of, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks one time, but I do fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. You get the picture? Instead of focusing on doing all of these things at an okay level, focus on specific things and make those absolutely elite features to your game. That's going to make OG and an OB better. That is going to make the Toronto Raptors better. Trading him is not going to make us better and that is a ridiculous take thank you so much for watching this video on amateur tv be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed and if you really enjoyed consider subscribing to the channel with that subscription you help us on the road to 13,000 subscribers and in return i'm giving you the greatest coverage and analysis on the on the latest toronto raptors news three or four streams a week for every raptors game three or four videos a week covering this team keep it locked and i'll see you again next time for another video